we are looking at the Coconino sandstone and we want to uh, look at the sandstone because it's a very important sandstone within uh, creation models. Uh, this sandstone was first studied in the early 1930s by a famous uh, Grand Canyon geologist named Edwin McKee. And one of the things that he pointed out about the sandstone is that it has these uh, big crossbeds in it. These are relatively small crossbeds for the Coconino. These can be uh, much, much bigger. But he said that it's a crossbedded sandstone and that he said these dips are, are fairly steep. Uh, he said that if you look at the, the sand grains under the microscope uh, right here, that the sand grains tend to be fairly well sorted and that, that they're all the same size and they also tend to be fairly well rounded. And Edwin McKee published this and there hasn't been too much work uh, done in the sandstone in the 80 or so years since Edwin McKee published and he argued that this was a desert sand dune deposit. Uh, he said that uh, these cross beds uh, represent the faces of desert sand dunes and so he said this deposit was a uh, fossilized desert and that causes problems for creationists because uh, below this we think we have flood rocks above this we think we have flood rocks and we can't have a desert right in the middle of Noah's flood and so I started to study uh, different aspects of this sandstone about 20 years ago and uh, in the more recent years I've, I've really done uh, some extensive study of this rock and that's included uh, collecting uh, pieces of rock so we could examine it under the microscope. We've uh, looked at about 400 uh, samples of this rock under the microscope. And we found some very interesting things, some things that point to a marine origin of the sandstone. And so one of the things that we've done is that we've measured uh, these crossbeds and the angle of these crossbeds. And in a desert setting, uh, these cross beds should be right around 33 or 34 degrees. That's called the angle of repose. And as we've measured cross beds in the Coconino, um, we found that they average about 20 degrees. And that's a very consistent measurement, uh, the same as that's been reported in the literature uh, up to 60 years ago. As we cut the thin sections and looked at this rock under the microscope, uh, we found out that these are not well-rounded sand grains. Um, under the microscope, these sand grains are sub-rounded to sub-angular. And that's probably not something that we would expect in a desert setting. Um, we've also done uh, some measurements on the, the uh, size of the sand. And we found out that the size is not all a consistent size. We might argue that this uh, sand is maybe moderately sorted at the best and some places I've seen it, it's poorly sorted. And again, those are some things that are inconsistent with the desert model. Some other really interesting things that we found in the sand is um, under the microscope, every once in a while as you look at it, uh, you find these little tiny flakes of muscovite. And muscovite is a, a type of mica. It's uh, really shiny. Uh, oftentimes, if you look at the, the beach sand, you see these little mirror-like reflections in the beach sand. That's muscovite. And muscovite uh, doesn't survive uh, very well in, uh, in desert settings. In fact, uh, I've had some students that have done some experiments, and they took uh, some muscovite-rich sand, uh, put it in a, a pickle jar with an airplane propeller in the, on the lid and they spun the sand around inside the pickle jar and after about uh, four days all the muscovite was gone. We couldn't find any more. Um, we had another student that took the same pickle jar, uh, put some, some of this muscovite sand in it and then we put it on a rock tumbler and with water. And after a year, we finally ended the experiment, but after a year, there were still flakes of muscovite in that pickle jar. And uh, we would use some of those experiments to argue, and the fact that this uh, sandstone has muscovite flakes in it, that uh, that argues strongly uh, for the, the subaqueous uh, origin of this sandstone. Another mineral that we found in here that was a bit of a surprise was dolomite. And we found uh, what are called dolomite ooids. They're uh, little uh, BB-sized balls of dolomite that we find in the rock in some places. We found dolomite cement, um, dolomite clasts, and uh, in some places we've even found uh, beds of dolomite that are about that thick. 
And dolomite is a marine mineral. It doesn't uh, form readily in large quantities in a desert or anything like that. It's uh, solely a uh, marine um, type of mineral. Um, the other thing that we found that was really interesting is if we have cross beds that are angled like this in the Coconino, we found that some of these cross beds actually are folded over on their side uh, to make what we call a parabolic recumbent fold. You can see how I've bent the paper right here. It's in the shape of a, a sideways parabola. And uh, we found uh, some folds like this in the Sedona area. And again, these are only things uh, that can form underwater uh, due to very strong currents. And so we've put a number of these pieces of data together um, to argue that this Coconino sandstone is marine origin. In fact, we found some things in the sandstone that can only be explained if it's a marine origin. And so uh, I think um, we can uh, look at this sandstone as not a problem uh, for a flood model or a problem for creationists, uh, but a sandstone that very strongly argues that Noah's flood was real. Um, we've also looked at um, how extensive this sandstone is and we've been able to trace layers that are very similar to this uh, from here in Arizona and California all the way up into the Dakotas. The name changes as you go to different places but there's a fairly continuous layer of sand uh, like this that's fairly extensive over the western United States. And as we go over to Europe, there's some other sandstones uh, in Europe, the Hopeman sandstone, for example, that has uh, very similar characteristics uh, to the Coconino. Mm -hmm.